So let's look at another polynomial example. Um, this time you can see that our polynomial is given to us in factored form. Um, so certainly that makes one thing a little bit easier for us. All right? It means that we already know the roots of our polynomial. So clearly we've got roots at 0. So this is both x and y intercept. And we've got another x intercept out at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, there's our second intercept. All right, now, if you're so inclined, you can do a sign diagram for the original function to see where things are positive or negative. Uh, because this is a square, the only sign change that we're going to have actually takes place at 5, right? Um, this will always be positive. This will be positive if x is smaller than 5 and negative if x is bigger than 5. So that means we know that we're above the x-axis everywhere until we reach here, then we're going to cross. Um, the other thing we know, in fact, we know this even before we take the derivative. This is one of these things, you know, that's a little bit easier with polynomials. Um, we know there has to be a minimum at 0 because we know we touch the x-axis at 0. We have an intercept there, but we know we don't cross because the function doesn't become negative at 0, right? So we know that the graph has to have a minimum there, right? We know it's going to cross here. One thing we don't yet know is what it looks like when it crosses that point. We're going to see that there's a little bit, you know, there's something a little bit interesting that goes on there, but we're going to need to take some derivatives to find out. So we will skip writing a sign diagram for the original function. We jump right to the first derivative. Now, um, it's going to be easier to find our critical points if we leave the function as is. You might say, well, it'll be easier to take the derivative if we multiply everything out, but of course then you've got to do the work of multiplying things out, uh, and that includes multiplying out this cube. Um, and, but yeah, so then you get to take the derivative term by term, but then you still have to try and factor, and you're still going to have, right, we're, we're at degree 5 to start with, you'd have to factor a degree 4 polynomial, which is generally not so easy. So let's see what happens if we just do product rule. Um, product rule plus we're going to need chain rule here, right? So the derivative of x squared is 2x, right? So we do derivative of the first times the second, and then we do the first x squared times the derivative of this. So power rule says 3 comes down in front, 5 minus x to the power 2. Uh, but then we have to take the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of the inside gives us a minus 1. Let's just put a minus sign right there, okay? All right. Uh, now, the reason that this is helpful is you'll notice that there's an x that's common to both. And, oops, should be a little bit careful here. That's not where that cube goes, is it? Cube is out here. 5 minus x is common to both. In fact, 5 minus x squared is common to both. So what we want to do is we want to take out those common factors, and that's why it's easier in this form. So we take out x, we take out 5 minus x all squared, and we say, what are we left with? Well, here we're left with that 2, and we took out two factors of 5 minus x. There's one left over in this first term, 5 minus x, okay? Coming over here, we have that minus 3, and we removed one of these two x's, but there's one left over. Okay, we've got that. All right, so this is not so bad, right? We've got x, 5 minus x, all squared. And what do we have here if we were to expand things out? 2 times 5 is 10, minus 2x, minus 3x. So 10 minus 5x. Okay. So we can leave it at that. Um, you might want to go one step further, realize that there's a 5 common here. So this is 5 times 2 minus x. All right. So that sets us up, of course, to get our critical points. So let's give ourselves a little number line. And let's mark off our critical numbers. So we have critical numbers at... 0, at 2, and at 
5. Okay? And notice the even power on the 5 minus x. Right? Um, because of that even power, what's going to happen is we don't get a sign change at 5, right? Because 5 minus x is positive here, it's negative here, but we're squaring it. If we square it, it's going to be positive on both sides. Um, so what we want to do is we're going to say, okay, if x is bigger than 5, let's say 6, for example, what do we have? Well, this will be positive, this will be positive, right? We get minus 1, but we're squaring. Uh, but this will be negative, right? 2 minus 6. So we have a negative sign out here. Sorry, negative. And it stays negative on the other side of 5, right? Because of the even power. When we cross 2, this factor is going to become positive. That's the factor that was giving us that minus sign. So it's positive now. So now we have a plus sign. When we cross 0, well, then x is going to become negative, And now we have a minus sign again. OK. So there's actually only one interval on which it's increasing, right? It's increasing from 0 to 2. Everywhere else, our function is decreasing. And we know that we have something which looks like, well, it's decreasing, then it's increasing, then it's decreasing again, and then it's decreasing again here. Now, there's one more thing that we can get at 5, right? Um, it's decreasing on both sides of 5. But when we cross the x-axis, we're not going to cross like this because we do have a critical number here, right? And even though we're decreasing on both sides, right, derivative gives the slope of the tangent line. Derivative is 0 at 5. That means that as we cross 5, we know that we have to have a horizontal tangent, right? So the curve has to sort of flatten out there and then continue down. OK, so we know it has to look like that there. OK, we know that when x is equal to 2, and, and by the way, uh, f of 2, f of 2 is actually a pretty big number, right? Um, 2 squared is 4. Uh, 5 minus 2 gives me 3. 3 cubed is 27. So 108, right? Now, there's nothing forcing you to actually use equal scale for x and y. So what we can do is just mark 108 up there and say, OK, here's, here's my max. It's at 2 and 108, right? We have this horizontal tangent at 5, 0. We know we have another minimum at the origin. So now we kind of, you know, we're starting to piece things together here. OK. And you can probably start to guess what this thing's going to look like. Um, the only thing that we still need to deal with is, well, somewhere between this minimum and this maximum, there's got to be a concavity change, right? Because we're concave up here, we're concave down here. Um, it already looks like there is a, there's an inflection point at 5, right? Because we're concave up, then we're concave down. We want to confirm that. And we also want to check to see whether or not maybe there are some other inflection points that we haven't spotted. So we go on to the second derivative. Um, now, second derivative is, is going to be a little bit harder here. So we'll see what we can do. Um, it might help to simplify f prime a little bit more. Um, we, can get, so we can switch the order here. The square of 5 minus x is the same as the square of x minus 5, because they differ by a minus sign. And you square that minus sign, it goes away. Um, we have that 5 there. We can take that out. In fact, if we take out a minus 5, we can write f prime like this. Minus 5x okay, times x minus 2 times x minus 5 squared. You might find it's a little bit easier to take the derivative like that. And in fact, you might want to go maybe one step further. Um, minus 5 x squared minus 2x x minus 5 squared. Uh, the only reason for doing that is now I only have two terms in the product rule instead of three, right? So it'll maybe shorten the amount of work I have to do here. So we take the derivative of f prime. What do we get? Well, we have that minus 5 out front. Okay. Now we do the product rule. 
The derivative of the first is going to be 2x minus 2, okay, times the second, x minus 5 squared, okay, plus the first, x squared minus 2x, times the derivative of the second, which is going to be 2 times x minus 5, all right? Um, times the derivative of the inside, but the derivative of the inside is just 1. Okay. So now we tried to clean up, and again we notice we still have x minus 5 as a common factor, which is going to verify that inflection point at 5, right? So we have minus 5, x minus 5, and what does that leave me with? Um, that leaves me with 2x minus 2 times x minus 5, and then 2 times x squared minus 2x. Okay. So the last thing to do is clean up on the inside here. There's going to be a 2x squared here. There's another 2x squared there. 4x squared. Um, then we're going to have minus 10x minus 2x minus 4 more. Um, minus 16x plus 10. Okay? All right. So now we have this, this quadratic here that we have to deal with, and it's not a particularly nice quadratic, right? Um, we could bring one more 2 out front, I guess, but let's see what we can do if we solve, right? So this, this is going to be 2 times 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. So if we apply the quadratic formula to that, we're going to have x is equal to 8 plus or minus. So 8 squared is 64 minus, so we do 4ac, right? So 4 times 2 times 5. Okay, over 2 times 2. Okay, so this is 64 minus 40, 24. So 8 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 4. Uh, the square root of 24, so 24 is 4 times 6, so this is is 2 root 6. Right? So we can simplify a little bit more if you like. Uh, this is going to be uh, 2 plus or minus 1 half root 6. Okay, and then maybe you got to estimate a little bit like what, you know, what are those values, right? So let's see. Root 6 is going to be, I don't know, a little bit bigger than 2, right? 2 point something. Um, probably a little bit less than two and a half. So we're going to have uh, two, and then we're going to divide by two, right? So root six over two, we're looking at somewhere that's, you know, a little bit bigger than one, right? So one of these roots is a little bit bigger than three. The other one is a little bit less than one, okay? That makes sense here here, okay, right? We're going to switch from concave down to concave up. So what we want to do is we want to mark those points off, and again, uh, we don't need to be perfectly accurate with these, right? I'm not even going to bother plugging them into the function to get the y values. If you want to, you can do that. It's going to be some calculator work, right? Get those y values. So let's say we got something like that, okay? There's my inflection point. So this is going to be at um, 2 plus root 6 over 2, and f of, right, I'm not, I'm not even going to bother working out what that is. The other one's over there. Now we connect the dots. So we come up, concave up, till we hit that inflection point, switch to concave down, through the maximum, concave down, till we hit the inflection point, switch to concave up, 
come through that horizontal tangent, and then we head down, right? And there's your graph, right? Not to scale, right? The actual graph, if you're going to plot this on a computer and you don't kind of set any adjustments to the, uh, to the x versus y scale, it's going, to, it's going to look like this, right? It's going to be really steep looking. Um, but you can, you can adjust the scale and, and probably get something that looks something like this.